What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. Now, today on the table in front of us is something obscene. Well, something from the Something Obscene Company. This is the J-Cape, and this, this is one hell of a pocket knife. Um, I have a real thing for knives with a good compound grind, and this thing has a really good compound grind. It is M390. It is all titanium. It's running on ceramic bearings. It is, in fact, made by Wii and made very, very well. Uh, these are about 300 bucks when they first hit the market. Unfortunately, uh, the guys over at Something Obscene Company, or SOC, uh, make them in small batches. So they are kind of hard to come by right now. Uh, I got this one from Eugene Kwan. If you have not watched Eugene Kwan's YouTube channel and his dashboard reviews, you are absolutely missing out. His reviews are some of my favorites. I watch them all the time, and he has got some of the most amazing knives. This was one of them, but now uh, this one is mine. <laughs> uh, what do you get? Well you get a very interesting design. Now, this one happens to be all dark gray stone washed. Some of them have uh, clean uh, satin blades. Some of them have some anno. Uh, there is a flipper version. This one happens to be the thumb stud version. And the action on this is simply some of the best I have ever had. It's just so good. Now, I know that Wii makes good knives. I've had a number of them. Of course, my favorite Wii made knife is this, which is the VDK Impaler, another knife with a really interesting compound grind. Turns out, when we wants to make, we, the knife company, wants to make a good knife, how do they ever? <laughs> this knife shares features with some of my favorite knives. Um, of course, a longtime favorite for me and the channel is the Riot made Chavez 229. Both have just an exquisite compound grind. Both are, well, the action has set the tone for every other knife I've ever had. And when I say that this has a good action, this is the knife that I use to determine whether or not a knife has a good action. It is thumb stud deployed. It is smooth. It is drop shutty without being dangerously just slap shutty. Everything about this knife is made, as far as I'm concerned perfectly. I've had this knife for going on a year now and it is still the knife that I use to compare other knives to for fit finish, quality, design, and comfort. And the J-Cape, well, it's everything this is. It really is. As you can see, it fits my hand like it was made for it. The jimping here on the top of the blade is perfect for push cuts. Because of this generous sharpening choil, and you can get your fingertip in there a little bit for delicate push cuts, but it's a little small for that. I don't recommend it. But basically the cutting edge starts here and travels just past these thumb studs. Now they are a little forward, a little bit into the cutting path, but nothing that I have had any trouble with. The blade itself, <laughs> got this blade, the compound grind means the tip is very, very robust. It has this beautiful swedge across the top, and the flat, excuse me, the hollow grind through here means this comes down to a very slicey edge. This knife performs as well as any knife I own, and I have a lot of knives. Every once in a while, a knife comes along that becomes one of those knives that just sets the bar. This is one of those knives. This is one of those knives. Um, they're so good and so well done that I know I'll be comparing other knives against them going forward. This is another one. Each of these is different and unique. Uh, conveniently, these two are made, as I mentioned, by We, which tells me that when We, again, wants to, they make such good knives. <laughs> The J-Cape is, well, spectacular. 
It has a small backspacer back here that has jimping on it. Uh, again, the jimping up here at the thumb ramp is just about perfect. It has a very nice tall blade, which gives it tons of room to come down to a very slicey edge, as I mentioned. It is comfortable in hand, even though we have moved away from sort of my favorite, just sort of rectangular handle, it is still built for a really nice grip. Now, I have heard some people complain that they thought this knife was not big enough. Um, you guys know I like really big knives. This isn't. This is a medium, moderately sized knife that just happens to ring all of my bells. <laughs> it really does. So let's go ahead and knock some specs out of the way. If we line it up here on the line, you get one, two, three full inches of cutting on the M390 on three and a half inches of blade overall. From just behind the, uh, the, uh, the start of the choil right here, you get one, two, three, and th yeah, just under four inches of handle area, just shy. For me, that is perfect. The overall knife is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just shy of eight inches long. It is a really, really nice size with a ton of blade. And again, that action is just out of this world. Let's get some size comparisons out of the way. We might as well get, bring this one back into the picture. Here it is against the Chavez 229. And as you can see, the uh, J-Cape is a little shorter. It uh, has a little tiny less blade. Uh, it is a slightly smaller knife than this. What else can we compare it against that's fun and interesting? Well, we'll go with our, fan, our standard small knife fare. Here is the uh, bug out. And as you can see, the J-Cape is not uh, terrifically larger than the bug out, except everywhere that matters. <laughs> Uh, it is so much more a handful that even though it is a shorter knife, it still works really, really well. Here it is against the small Feldspar, which is, again, an even smaller knife. And as you can see, the CJRB Feldspar in small is considerably smaller. Let's put it up against something new. This <laughs> is the Kershaw Knockout. Uh, this one happens to be an M390 and carbon fiber on both sides. This is going to get its own review. And actually, the reason that I wanted to bring this out is because they have, even though this is not hollow ground, they have a very similar blade profile. Uh, I happen to like nice tall blades uh, that give you a lot of room to come down to a very slicey edge. Both of these do that very, very well. And then finally, our dear old friend, the Rat Model 1, which is going to be longer. So the J-Cape is not a big knife, except, except it fits the hand like a big knife. It is a solid handful, and that really matters to me. Uh, you know, I watched these things come and go online. I missed the initial drop. I watched people fall in love with them. Some people were a little bent out of shape because they're we made, whatever. There's always complaints. But for the most part, the reviews were basically globally good. And I was always bummed that I missed out on the chance to have one. And then, um, well, Eugene came along and fixed that for me. And I am very, very grateful. Let's go ahead and weigh this thing out and see where we land weight-wise. Now, one of the things I do want to mention is there is there, there's no milling on the inside of this knife. So it's going to be just at six ounces. Uh, for a three and a half inch blade, that's a lot for some people. It's not a lot for me. I think it makes sense. Oh, and by the way, look at this pocket clip. <laughs> this lightning strike pocket clip is so cool. Um, it does hang up a little bit on these steps sometimes when you slide it in and out of pocket, but the actual ramp, that's fine. There's a good spot. See that? The actual ramp here and the amount of lift means this thing fits beautifully in just about any size pants. Let's go ahead and measure out the blade stock on this M390 blade. We are oh, right where we need to be. If we pinch that right there at the fattest point, you can see it is coming in. There it is, just under four millimeters. It is a really nice thick piece of M390. Not overly so, but just right. 
The handle itself is 13.6 millimeters or just over a half inch. There we go, just over a half inch thick. This way, on the other hand, at its thickest point back here, it's in 1.3 inches. So it is larger than an inch at its fattest point, which happens to settle into your palm beautifully. I'm telling you, this thing fits the hand so well. The blade itself, from its tallest point down, is 1.4 inches. So just shy of a full inch and a half. And yep, you can see that when I line it up. This knife is, well, it's fantastic. <laughs> I am a fan. And that's cool. It's always nice when you get something new and it turns out to be everything you wanted it to be. Because often, that doesn't really work out that way. In this case, and these are out there, although the aftermarket prices are a little prohibitive, if you are looking for a knife that is very, very good, I'm telling you right now, the JK by Something Obscene Company, this is the third version, the V3, is really worth looking at. And if they do another drop and you're interested, go after it, because they will not do you wrong with this thing. I love this knife. I'm really glad it's in the collection. I hope you, you have the wow. I hope you have enjoyed looking at it too. If you have any questions about any of the knives you've seen on the channel today, feel free to ask down in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I would love to have you here on a regular basis. Please like the video on your way out as it does help the channel. We'll see you next time.